Hey guys, um, just wanted to share with you a dream I had last night. I felt it was very imperative to share with you. Um, pardon my attire, I'm still kind of getting there, but I'm still recovering from some surgery. Uh, I'll have to share that with you in a minute, towards the end probably. This dream last night, woke up at five in the morning. And in this dream, I saw this, it was on like a, not really a desert, but on land, um, but it was just a flat land. There was no growth or anything, kind of sandy, maybe even a beach, um, a little hill, but this big, huge alligator, like huge, big, fat alligator. And he went like this, and there was a man laying there in a suit, a black and white suit. with like a red tie on. <clears throat> and the alligator just crushed his head. Couldn't see it. And the man looked dead. And then I saw the words right above it. Fearful, poison, And no, I'm forgetting the last one. Deceived. And I was like, man, Lord. The enemy is coming against the body of Christ. But he's after the head to destroy us. Whether it's the head of family, the head of the church, the head of the nation. But he's really also after the mind. Fearful. I said, well, Lord, kind of, you know, questioned him. Fearful. Okay, I get that. Deceived. Yes, I get that. Poisoned, but one that order, you know, and what are you trying to show me, Lord? I just kind of started questioning him. It took me back to the Garden of Eden and the apple. It wasn't deception as much as it was fear that started that. They were fearful that they were going to miss something that God was trying to hide from them. Then it became deception. I mean, then it'd be quite poisonous. It's poison to dilute and pollute their mind to deceiving them. So they couldn't be in the garden anymore. That's what he's doing, guys, right now. And the Lord spoke to me and said that was one of his biggest tools that the enemy had. When he had a tool, it was because he's fearful of what's coming to him. He's all about fear. And look around, guys. It was already there, but now the the COVID, the whole world is in fear and panic and running and pandemonium. And it's poison. The waters are poisoned. The air is polluted. The media, the trash, the just everything to just wear your mind out to deceive you. Because the end result, guys, is Revelations 21 and 8. Hell was never designed for his children. But the enemy wants to deceive you, to take you down with them. The fearful and unbelieving. Guys, we can't be living in this fear and unbelief. What's God saying? Okay, I'm gonna tell you <clears throat> now about my surgery. <clears throat> but actually, let me t share this with you. I've had more than one, but I've had my Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego moment in the fiery furnace. About two years ago, I had 
one, well, they called them mini strokes, but so there's probably more than one, but they were strokes in my brain. Three MRIs, guys, I couldn't even walk, literally. I would fall without any warning, not once or twice, bunches of times. And I was like, man, God, this is not going to work. I wasn't fearful, but I was like, man, this is not going to work. What if I fall in the parking lot at the grocery store? What if I fall on the steps? You know, what if I fall at church? What if I fall in public? It was just, man, it was a mess. What if I fall, break something? So three MRIs, diagnosis. I still got the report. I can get the MRIs if you want to see them. Moderate to severe brain loss. Show me parts of my brain, guys, that were dead. And there was nothing firing the neurons. Nothing was there. The lights were out. One part of them was the part that controlled my balance. So you know what, guys? I shouldn't even be up and walking, according to the doctor's reports. But not according to God's report. Guess I don't need that part of my brain, God. That's what I told him. Long, long story. But came out of the fire and don't smell like smoke. Because he walked with me in the fire. I'm sure many of y'all have had some maybe just similar experiences. More or less, you know, we've all had some. I call them landmarks. Okay, now let's fast forward it to this surgery that I just had. I was in the hospital, a little small pinprick. I don't know, it might have been a nail or whatever, but it, it poked into my toe, but it poked into the bottom in the crease. Caused an infection. Because I'm diabetic, I can't really feel my feet that good, guys. So I just, I knew they started to hurt. But they, I looked and they didn't look bad. Well, a couple of weeks later, it, it just blew up and swelled and it turned red as a red hot chili pepper, guys. And then my big toe and everything and my leg. And it's like, I showed my wife. I was like, man, I got to go to the, you know, she wanted to take me right then and there to the emergency room. Well, it was right before Thanksgiving. And I was like, the day before. And I was like, no, I can't go. We got Thanksgiving. We got, you know, I don't want to ruin everybody's Thanksgiving. I'm in the hospital. I went that Friday after to an emergency room. Three emergency rooms, guys, over the period of, of two weeks. Two weeks in the hospital. But the first hospital I was in, the very first day, they put me on this restricted diet, couldn't eat or drink anything. They kept coming in and just handing around at it. Procedure, gonna have a procedure. Well, what procedure? Well, you know, clue me in, okay? You know. Almost like I didn't exist in the room. <clears throat> they wanted to cut parts of me off. Toe for sure. Probably part of my foot. Maybe even all my foot. The infection, guys, had spread all the way up my leg. It looked really, really bad. <clears throat> I'm praying about it. I was telling my wife, I said, well, as long as the doctor, the one who was going to supposedly do this surgery... Procedure, they called it. Didn't come in with a, you know, a hacksaw and a bolt cutters. I was gonna, I was fine. Well, guess what he did? Didn't even look at the x-rays. Did they take x-rays was what his question. He wasn't even in there a minute. Some of the other doctors were really good. Some of them weren't. But this one was like just in and out. And he's the guy that's going to do the surgery. Didn't look at the x-rays. Did they take them? Yes, they did. I brought them from the other hospital, from the emergency room at the first hospital I went to, and then I came here. Because <clears throat> my wife had been in that hospital and she liked it, or thought she did. <clears throat> they did an MRI, I told them. Oh, I don't like MRIs. Uh, he ordered x-rays. Well, it was, you know, Saturday afternoon. I went in there on a Friday. And this was next day. And he said, well, I'm off tomorrow. I'll see you Monday. I told him, no, we're not going to do surgery. 
well, you're gonna, you know, die and lose your foot, blah, 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 da, da, da. Very life threatening. And he just kind of walked out. Like, okay, I get it. So I prayed a lot about it. Well, the very next day, literally, this doctor flew in. Kind of like what the devil does to war with us, thwart our minds. But I prayed about it. And the Lord said, no, get rid of the infection first. Get him to get rid of the infection first. So they were on Zion antibiotics, real strong. <clears throat> Told her that I said I'm not going to have the surgery. She literally slammed, pretty much slammed her clipboard down. Pens flew, part of a clipboard flew, pieces of paper flew. Well, there's a nurse in there that was about to give me my nut next dose of antibiotics. But she literally ran out of the room, guys. This doctor was poking this Q-tip in my, you know, how serious it was. Well, you could have almost poked it through because I'm sharing this with you, so you can realize what the enemy's trying to do. You could literally almost poke it through because the infection had gotten to the end of the bone, but it wasn't, it was serious, yes, but when you hear the end result, you'll see what I'm saying. They didn't need to cut off my foot. If I, if I would have let them, they would have cut my foot off below the neck, guys, honestly, and I wouldn't be here right now, most likely. I'd still be in the hospital. They would have been cutting and cutting and cutting. All I'm going to do is cut and push the infection all around in my body. I told them no. It's when all hell seemed to break loose. But the more I stayed there, the less I thought of the hospital. Because I was there for a week. They put in a bunch, that hospital put in about a lot of antibiotics. And then when I left, I left AMA against medical advice. They weren't even going to give me a walker to get out the door, guys. They were mad. <clears throat> they did a bunch of tests and stuff, though, but the whole time they kept trying to push me and push me and push me into this. <clears throat> My wife and I went to a specialist that I knew. He said the same thing. I better go back to the emergency room. That was the second emergency room. No, the third emergency room. Sorry, the first hospital was an emergency room. That's how I got admitted. Then this was, was oh, this would have been the third one. So I went, but we but we, we didn't know where we were going to go, and we prayed about it, and we had a really close friend, and it was like, man, then the, the dots started connecting. I had had really good results at this major hospital in the city where I'm at, and I didn't even remember it. It was two years ago, and I thought they told me I was going to lose my eye, my, this eye, completely. I got about 90% vision now, but everybody else was like, man, it's good. You know, I put acid got in it, alkaline acid, and it had destroyed it pretty bad. But the specialist saved it. It took a long time. Pretty painful. But <clears throat> I forgot about it. But when I got to this hospital and they pump, finished pumping more antibiotics in me, I ended up with probably 60 to 80 IVs, guys. They were doing like four to eight a day at both hospitals. Just, man, a lot. But the doctor explained to me what he's gonna do. He said to cut a little piece of my toe. I don't wanna lose any, guys, but I still had to have the procedure and the operation. They cut off a little bit of my toe, toenail, toenail above, so. I haven't looked at it yet. It's an abandoned. I got to go by, but it hurts some. But the one thing that he did when he was done, a great surgeon. My wife said, only God, you know, can heal this. And he was like, you know, he was a good Christian. Thank you, Jesus. He told me, explained everything to us. Operation man, when I got in the operating room, there was you know four surgeons, people everywhere. It was a very nice, clean place. The other hospital, my wife and I were talking about where I was going to go. She's like, We're going to go just go back to press to this hospital. I said, No, I said, You know, they can. I said, No, I'm not going back to these guys, just whack parts off my body. Very, very adamant about it. And one of the reasons why, more than one, but. They're a week, right? 
Lady came in twice to clean the room. With a broom and no dustpan. Like, man, where'd you put the dust? Oh, but did you want me to go in your operating room under a scalpel? And man, there's no tell them how dirty that place was. Can you clean your rooms? No. And then plus all the other stuff too, you know. It's like, no, 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 no. I'm not living under that fear. I'm going to follow the leading of the Lord. So back to this other doctor. He cut a little bit of the toe off. Well, the last thing they did was they cut off the very tip of the bone that below right where they did the surgery. It was still part of, my, part of my body. And they do a biopsy on it. It takes a while. It took about a week. Pathology pathology report came back. 100% the surgery was 100% successful. There was no infection past where he cut off. Yes, I lost a little part of my toe. Pretty good lesson, guys. But I said no to the fear and the unbelief. I got a boot on, pain in the butt to walk. They want me to use a walker. I'm already able to kind of even get around with, without the walker. My wife gets a little bit upset with me on that, but... <clears throat> But they released me to walk, to walk, heal, heal only. The surgeon did. <clears throat> oh, I was like, well, they told you. Like, no, they said I, you know, can use, but to heal, they just don't want me to use it all the time. They don't want me to put a lot of pressure on it. They don't want me to put pressure. So no pressure on the front. Don't. So I'll, you know, it's a little hard. <clears throat> First day took two people to get me up the steps into the house. Today, it's been a week. You know, I got up the steps by myself pretty much. My son was there, and he just stood behind me to balance, make sure I didn't fall over backwards, but I wasn't able to do it all by myself. <clears throat> I'm able to get around pretty good. You know, I'll be up and walking within a couple of weeks or a month, oh, I'm sure. Not even, you know. I mean, I can get around pretty good now already. So, I said all that to say this. We can't cave into this fear. I'm going to say this, that's what I'm going to call it. Comply till you die. That's what the governments are telling us. Wear a mask. Lock yourself up. Don't see anybody. Just on and on and on. Fear, fear, fear. Fear of lack. Fear of the money. Fear of the, you know, man, it's relentless. Where is it coming from? The enemy. I don't wear a mask, guys. I haven't worn one since it started. I carry one in my pocket 99% of the time. There's a few times where I wear it. And there's one store that I go to that I don't really want to wear it, but I shop there occasionally. I don't shop there that often now because of it, but I don't get yelled at anymore, so I wear it a little bit until I quit yelling. But other than that, no. I'm not caving in the fear. Why? Because I know it's behind the mask. Have they done anything with this? No, they haven't, guys. All they did is tell you how bad it is and how bad it's going to get and how worse it's getting and how many more, more cases there are and how worse and worse and worse. Remember I told, just got done telling the story about the hospital? Guys, I was there two weeks, three emergency rooms, didn't wear a mask most of the time, saw a lot of doctors, nurses, asked a lot of questions. Yes, the hospital is full. Bringing, boil, boiling over with capacity. Lots of people with, with COVID that were sick. But they weren't all dying, guys. There was no more trucks out there. There wasn't nearly the pandemic that they're portraying it to be. Disease, the hospital's full of diseases, though, guys, and other people, too. I'm not making light of the fact that people are really sick and some people are actually losing their lives over this. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not going down that road. But I'm saying this fear, take a vaccine for a 99% survival rate, the hoopla of the media, just sensationalism, all based upon fear. So they can get to this. So they can get to this, your heart. So you think you can get disconnected from God. This is the last thing I'm going to say because it was related. It's a really good message, honestly. Remember I told you a little bit ago about the biopsy and how they cut it to make sure there's no infection? 
Well, this doctor, and he was a really good doctor, guys, that had an infectious disease, people or whatever. You could tell he was a really, really smart guy. But he spent 15 minutes with me, explained everything to me. And he said, you know, he said he's glad that they did at the first hospital. He's glad that they did this MRI and the sonogram thing, and checked my veins to make sure that the blood supply was really good, he said, because it's kind of like a pop bottle. If you keep, you know, try to put more in there, it, you know, it's just going to flow. It doesn't matter how good the medicine was, the antibiotics, if there's no blood flow to the bone, the bone dies. Kind of like that scripture, guys. Can these bones live? The dry bones. If we're not connected to the vine, guys, to the blood of the lamb. That's where the enemy enters in. Because we got nothing. Then we're going to listen to this fear. And comply or die. Basically. To the torment, the fears, the unbelief. All the things the enemy wants us to think are true. That aren't. What's God telling you? That's where, I'm, that's where I'm at. The connection to God is through the blood of the Lamb. Real simple scripture. No man can see the Father except through me. We've got to be connected to God, but it's got to be the right way through the blood of the Lamb. Man, it's rampant. It's rampant in the church, guys. People try to beat you over the head with the Bible. Fear ye, fear ye into submission of serving God. Why do you think it says he sees the intent of your heart? You're scared to death. And you're serving him out of fear. You're not. That's not going to work. That doesn't fly. That dog won't hunt. It's out of love. Respect honor love the Lord thy God with all your heart it's scripture if, he, if it's Proverbs 3, 4, 5 and 6 trust in the Lord with all your heart acknowledge him in all your ways lean not on your understanding and he'll direct your paths this fear got to go guys in all of us maybe you might have to repent maybe not maybe you just it's just time to turn off all the sources of it. The media. Of course. This. Of course. Your, your computer. Of course. And see you at 5 in the morning. For early morning prayer. Love you guys. He didn't give us a spirit of fear. But of power and love. And a sound mind. <clears throat> all... Abraham with Isaac could have been fearful. Isaac was a little bit. Moses, his mom, sending him off into the river. Dirty old, nasty crocodile infested river. No, not knowing if she's ever going to see him again. Esther. He didn't just walk in the king's palace and say, Look, dude, you got problems and issues. And man, there's people waiting to kill her. Paul, all the men of God and women, this fear has got to go, guys, because it will paralyze you and poison you and deceive you to death without him. Let's get rid of it, whatever we have to do. Love you guys so much. Thank you for listening. God bless you.